Hello, my name is Asia Smith, and today I'll be discussing some topics on the Central American nation of Costa Rica. The official name of Costa Rica is La Republica de Costa Rica, and Costa Rica literally translates into rich coast. Costa Rica has two coastlines, one on the Pacific Ocean and the other on the Caribbean Sea, with Nicaragua to the north and Panama to the southeast. Among all the Latin American nations, Costa Rica ranks fourth on the Human Development Index. As a general overview, I will be going over three topics regarding Costa Rica. My first topic will be covering the independence and development of the Costa Rica nation. My second topic will be talking about the history of slavery in Costa Rica. And for my third topic, I will be discussing um, just women's roles in Costa Rica, um, specifically through three women. And yeah, and then I'll have my closing remarks and at the end I will have my work cited. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right in and let's get started. For my first topic, I will be briefly covering the independence and development of the Costa Rican nation. The neat thing about Costa Rica is that there really isn't any existing fighting in regards to Costa Rica's independence. Once Mexico declared its freedom from Spain, many parts of Central America had joined the Mexican Empire for a short time. By 1823, however, Costa Rica assisted in the creation of the United Provinces of Central America, but ties were broken when problems arose with other states within the Federation. Moreover, in 1962, the nation joined the Central American Common Market, an association created to navigate regional economic development. Moving forward, Costa Rica began to notice its potential for coffee cultivation and became extremely successful um, industry and among the Central American region. Costa Rica also maintained an isolation, isolationism policy but did not make Costa Rica completely immune to foreign conflicts. For example, William Walker, a threat to Central America during the mid-19th century, as his band of filibusters conquered Nicaragua in 1815-6. But thanks to the Costa Rican troops, they were able to drive him out of the area. In 1871, a new constitution was adopted by the Costa Rican nation and existed until the mid-20th century. And in 1881, 89, President Jose Joaquin Rodriguez would be considered the first entirely free and honest election in the entire Central American region, according to Britannica. The next topic I will cover is the history of slavery in Costa Rica. I find it truly fascinating to understand how countries like Costa Rica dealt with slavery in relation to the United States. Christopher Columbus was the first recorded discoverer of the country in 1502 and 1561. Spain established their first colony named Cartago in Costa Rica. Throughout the 1600s, the elite from the capital city began to invest in cac cacao farms. The Spanish named the region Costa Rica, which translates to rich coast, because the conquistadors thought they would discover gold in its hills. In my research, I found that the first slaves were brought to Costa Rica by Spanish conquistadors. Black slaves were brought here and were brought here to live on these farms. Over time, the country began to notice that there was a decrease within racial differences among slaves and their slave owners. As white men took slave women into their homes and continued to have children, many of the slave owners would free the children. A similar occurrence would take place among the Indians and the Blacks and their children. These children were referred to as the Zambos. Moreover, it was much less aggressive in terms of slavery in Costa Rica than it was in other neighboring countries. However, on April 17th of 1821, Costa Rica fully authorized the abolition of slavery. Interestingly enough, in 1872, two large migrations of Jamaicans occurred during a significant time of railroad construction within the country. This influx of Jamaicans and Africans simultaneously 
allowed Costa Rica to be the world's largest banana producer in 1911. Well into the 1940s, blacks were still not considered citizens of the Costa Rica nation. So in 1948, black workers took part in the 1948 Civil War to guarantee them the right of citizenship. Unfortunately, the black population began as a result of slavery in Costa Rica. The African population did, however, contribute greatly to the Costa Rican economy with their agricultural benefactions, as well as, well as constructional contributions in terms of the railroad, ultimately connecting the country to the rest of the region. My third topic will be discussing women's rights and the role and their role in Costa Rican history. Women are constantly dealing with gender pay gaps, sexual violence, and most disturbingly, femicide. I want to take some time to explore some impactful women in Costa Rica. The first is Francisca Pancha Carrasco. Francisca Pancha Carrasco fought in Costa Rica's army as well as a rebel against William Walker and his filibuster army. Her main job involved cooking and caring for the injured. However, she was a skilled shooter during battle. She was honored by the government and helped Costa Rica in their fight for independence. The next woman I will, the next woman I will be talking about is Emma Gamboa. Emma Gamboa was born in October 1901 in San Ramon de Alajuela and was an influential Costa Rican educator. In, 1930, in the 1930s and 40s, Gamboa was a leading advocate for women's rights in Costa Rica and was constantly encouraging women to campaign and march for that equal right. Emma Gamboa was the first cabinet minister of Latin America and a huge contributor to the suffragist movement in Costa Rica, leading the women's movement until they gained the right to vote in 1948. Moreover, in 1950, she was declared Woman of the Year by Madame Moisel magazine. Unfortunately, Gamboa died of cancer in 1970. However, after she died, she was recognized on the 10,000 Cologne Bill. Lastly, I want to mention Laura Chinchilla Miranda. Laura Chinchilla Miranda was born on March 28th of 1959 in Desamparos, Desamparados, Costa Rica, and would eventually become Costa Rica's first female president in 2010. She was so inspiring in the sense that she was also vice president as well as the minister of justice in the OAS. She was extremely involved in Costa Rica's social issues and demonstrated a decline in femicide crime rates in her country during her presidency. It is devastating to see how women are treated globally all around the world. However, it is comforting to know that women are fighting to make a difference and diminish mistreatment and equality every day. Um, For my closing remarks, I just want to acknowledge the beauty of Costa Rica. If you have not been, I strongly recommend that you go and you go ahead and just make the trip because it's absolutely amazing what you will see there. Um, Also, I just want to say that it was an amazing opportunity to just learn about um, the history found behind Costa Rica and um, the history behind its independence and how slavery ultimately affected um, um, the growth and the development of the nation, as well as learning more about um, women like Emma Gamboa, Laura Chinchilla Miranda, and um, Francisca Pancha Carrasco. I just think they're all amazing, and I will probably develop this more, make it more strong, but for my closing remarks, it should sound something like that.